All right. Uh, good morning, uh, third year media. It's very nice to have you here uh, today, or good afternoon, depending on when you watch this. Um, this is going to be our first proper lesson into what is media. I know we've talked a little bit about this already, uh, but I want to make sure that I get you into the right mindset before we start really picking apart any media. I want you thinking in the right way. I want you questioning the right things. Uh, so what we're going to look at today is a little bit about what is media and why does it exist? How do we encounter it? All right. So uh, what you're going to need today um, is listed just at the uh, at the bottom right hand corner of this slide. Uh, I want you to have something to write on, something to write with, um, or a, a laptop or a Word document or something like that. All right. I'm going to spend the first few minutes of this presentation. Sorry. <coughs> going over what I, how I expect you to engage with these presentations and how I'm trying to make it a little bit more straightforward for you. Okay. Uh, oh, can I do that with that open? Oh, I can. Do I want to? No, I don't. There we go. Um, so, what is media? While we're looking at this, um, I want to put down a few things for digital learning. Um, I, I, I want to make it as straightforward and as easy for you as possible. So if I want you to copy something, it will be written in this lovely shade of lilac, and there'll be a wee copy symbol somewhere on the board, uh, somewhere on the uh, the PowerPoint. At which point you just pause it, okay? You copy what you've been asked to copy, and your jotter on whatever writing device you have, and then you start it up again. If there's a task that I want you to take part in, and there are a few tasks in this, it'll be in red, and there'll be a wee task symbol. And that means that, again, you just need to pause the PowerPoint, you need to do whatever it is that you've been asked to do, and then you just start up the PowerPoint again. That way, uh, now I do need you to pause the PowerPoint, because all I'm going to do is pause for about 10 seconds, 5 seconds, to give you long enough to pause the PowerPoint and do the task. I'm not going to wait the length of the task, because otherwise this would be a ridiculously long loom and it would have just five minutes of me sitting here quietly waiting, which nobody wants. <coughs> so I realise that this one's going to be coming out on Thursday, but from here on out, my plan is to put out a loom every Wednesday and do a lesson every Tuesday. Okay, So what that means is you will have six days to watch the loom and complete the task in the loom. The first part of the lesson will be me going over the loom, asking if you had any questions, going over some of the answers that you guys gave and things like that, just consolidating what we've learned. Um, and then we'll take a wee bit of time to go through some more ideas, to look at some more ideas, to prepare you for the loom that's coming up the following day. So what will happen now is I, when I put this out, I will also be putting it out, as you should hopefully have already seen, with the date of our next uh, kind of conference call, as it were, which will be the 2nd of June. All right. But let's give our task system a go. Um, so as you can see, there's a wee task symbol. Oh, task symbol. In a previous PowerPoint, we discussed what the word media stood for. I want you to pause this presentation and write down, to the best of your knowledge, what you think media is, all right? So can you do that just now? Okay, you should have had time to pause it and write down whatever it is you're writing down. So what is media? This is a question that we have already talked about a little bit, but it's something that really needs to be broken down an awful lot. Most of the first few months of you studying this subject will be spent getting to grips with what is media, how is it made up, and how do we study it. So media is something that we encounter every day. We can't help it. It surrounds us at all times, in our homes, in the streets, in our schools, on our phones, on our laptops, on social media. You name it, we're encountering media, okay? But what is it? So you'll notice this is a copy section. It's all in that lovely lilac, so if you wouldn't mind. The main means of mass communication, broadcasting, publishing, and the internet, regarded, meaning watched or taken in, collectively. So when it says regarded collectively, it means watched en masse, watched by many people, without changing to adapt to that particular person. 
Key areas we will study will be film, television, advertising, gaming, and we might have a little look at some apps. We might even have a little look at some memes. Obviously, the difficulty with film and television just now is that it's hard for me to get you all watching a film if, uh, if, if we're not all in the same classroom, if we're not all in the same place. So we might start by focusing on advertising apps and, uh, and, and maybe something like memes just, uh, just to get your, your, your eye in, as it were. <clears throat> so hopefully you've paused this. You had time to copy it down. If you haven't, I'm just going to give you a few seconds to pause it and copy it down. Cool, plenty of time. So, work it out yourself. It's important that you can start to identify what media, what is media, and what's not media. All right. So, what I'm asking you to do here is there's a table on the board. Uh, on the board, it will be on your computer. Sorry, old habits, or your phone. This is the table. I want you to copy it out. I want you to have media on one side and not media written on the other, with a line breaking them up. You don't need that many lines, you'll need about four or five spaces to go down. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna sort the following statements into whether or not they're media, or whether they are not media, okay? So, first one is Black Panther, the movie. The next one is a letter to a friend. So just a personal letter that you have written to a friend, or I realize you don't send letters really anymore, probably. But let's just say you did humor me. If you were to send a letter to a friend, would it be one? A music video, so a video attached to a, a famous song. Uh, the Big Bang Theory, which is a TV show. A personal diary, so your own diary, if you should take one or someone else's if you don't. A recipe from your gran or your granddad or your aunt, a recipe that's been kind of given to you by a, a cherished relative. Uh, BBC News, a Harry Potter book, The Great British Bake Off, which is a television series again, and a Harry Potter film. <clears throat> so you're going to sort through them and you're going to decide which ones are media and which ones aren't. To do that, you'll have to decide, uh, is this something that is for more than just me is this something that was written down for everyone to to engage with people on mass or is this something that is just being kind of communicated to me or to someone else is this personal or is this collective as it were does that apply only to me or does it apply to hundreds of thousands if not maybe even millions of people okay hopefully this won't be too hard there's only one in there that is a bit of a curveball, and we'll talk about that on the next slide. So I'm gonna give you a wee second to pause it, and copy and fill out this table. <clears throat> All right, hopefully you've got this done just now. We're gonna look at the next slide. Um, I'm not doing it one at a time, I'm just gonna have them all on, and I'm gonna talk you through why each one is where it is. So, first we have Black Panther, okay? Black Panther is a piece of media. It is a movie that was released and viewed by millions upon millions of people. Um, it's it's not personalized. It's very much viewed in the collective. So it's a piece of media. The same goes for a music video. Okay, Music videos are again released to the public as a whole. Okay? They're an all round message, which makes them a piece of media. Big Bang Theory, Great British Bake Off and the Harry Potter film are all the same. Each one of these is released to millions of people at once. Okay, that makes it a, 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 a piece of media. A letter to a friend is very personal. You are not releasing it to millions of people uh, at once. You're sending it to one person. The same goes for a text or if you privately message them on Instagram or Facebook or WhatsApp or even on Snapchat. Slightly differently though, if you were to, let's say, upload to your, oh, we've gone forward. If you were to upload to your personal story on Snapchat, if your privately sent message was then screenshotted and shared online, both of these are technically becoming forms of media. 
if you're sharing to your entire following on Instagram or on Snapchat, this isn't this is suddenly not personal. You're releasing that that image or that message to a collective. And that's what makes it a piece of media. We'll talk more about that later. <clears throat> personal diary um, is obviously not media. It's your own personal diary for you. But if you were one day to become rich and famous and you're like, oh, I wrote this when I was 13, 14, however old you guys are. I bet you that would do all right. And then you just published it. Then suddenly it's a little bit more complicated. It's starting to fall under the same realms as a Harry Potter book, which we'll talk about in a moment. And a recipe from your grand, something that's been written down and given to you, all right? If it was a recipe that then appeared on Great British Bake Off or something like that, it becomes, again, a little bit more challenging. But when it's just a little recipe that's been given to you, that's not media. Now, the difficulty here is a Harry Potter book. I have queried a Harry Potter book as being more difficult to fit into not media because technically, you probably have it over in media. But we don't. And that's very important to note. Even though I'm going over the technicalities now because it's interesting, books are not media for our purposes. But why have I queried Harry Potter as being more difficult to fit into not media? Think about your definition of media. All right. Means of mass communication, broadcasting, publishing and the Internet regarded collectively. Why is a Harry Potter book a little bit more challenging or any book? Not, not just Harry Potter. So, pause this just now. Have a think. Try and answer that question. Why is the Harry Potter book more challenging? Cool. Plenty of time. So, literature like Harry Potter um, is a little bit more difficult to define because technically it could count as a form of mass communication. It can interact with us in many of the same ways as traditional media does. All right. What that means is much like if you release Black Panther, you release it and millions of people watch it within the first 72 hours. When you release a Harry Potter book, millions of people will read it in the first 72 hours. They all read it and they all take what they want to take away from it. They all interpret it in different ways, but they are all reading the same book. Much like when you go to a movie, you are all watching the same movie. You might come out of a movie and go, man, that was awful. That was bad and your best friend might come out going what are you talking about that was amazing now you've both seen the same book uh, sorry seen the same movie but you're interpreting it different ways and you do the same with a book okay now it's important to understand that technically the very broad definition books could be considered media but this is the bit that's really crucial here these formats when you're looking within um, the school structure tend to be counted as literature what that means is books, plays, poems, and even comics or graphic novels come under the sphere of something that you would study in English, not in media. And that's certainly the case for this course. We will not study any books, plays, or poems, uh, or comics for that matter. We might look at them and how they have influenced media. All right. So if you look at the Harry Potter books, they influence the Harry Potter films. They didn't just go, we'll make Harry Potter films, but we're going to set it in space. They obviously they based on the books, but the books for our purposes are not media. The films are, and that's really important. Okay, this is all based on uh, quite a good question uh, from one of you who was wondering about books. Um, <clears throat> so I want to make it clear: books for our purposes for this course, as long as you study media, do not count as media. So. Why does the media exist? This isn't a, an easy question. It's not a straightforward question. And there's definitely not just one answer. There are dozens of answers, okay? Depending on what type of media you're looking at, from what perspective you are looking at it. Uh, when I say what perspective, it means what view you have on that type of media, what you already believe about that type of media. So we're gonna take, <coughs> pardon me, we're going to take one piece of media, one type of media as it were, at a time. All right, we're going to talk about it one at a time. There's one that I'm going to put on the next slide, but we won't talk about it in this PowerPoint because it'll become more important in the next one. Okay. Below, and you can see task 
Ooh, look, consistent. Below, I'm going to list a few different types of media. For each one, what I want you to do is I want you to copy it out, and then next to it, I want you to write down a few reasons why this form of media exists. I have started for you, but I have left out one or two key reasons that this given form of media exists. So, when we're talking about movies, generally they exist to entertain us. I'm going for your classic fictional movie. I'm not going for a kind of documentary movie. I'm not going for an uh, maybe some kind of expose on uh, on 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 big business. Generally, the movies that we watch like exist to entertain us. That is to make us laugh, make us cry, um, you know, make us feel passionately about something, whatever it might be. Movies exist to entertain us. That's not the only reason. All right. They don't just exist to entertain us. There are more reasons and you might be able to fill out more reasons. But what I want you to do is I want you to take movies, TV shows, documentaries, newspaper, uh, sorry, newspapers and adverts. And adverts is the one that we'll talk about more next lesson. But I want you to take all five just now anyway. I want you to write them down and I want you to give me a few reasons why you think each one exists. Now, we've got a wee hint here. There is one answer here that is common pretty much across every type of media. What I mean by that is there's something that you could say movies exist to do something. And TV shows exist for the same reason. And so do documentaries. And so do newspapers. And so do adverts. And that's going to be more of a focus on our next um, kind of lesson. But I want you thinking about it just now. So pause this and decide <clears throat> what are the reasons for these different forms of media to exist. There's more than one reason for each one. There could be three, maybe even four reasons for, uh, for some of them. All right, we've got plenty of time to pause. Purpose of the media. Broadly speaking, the key purposes of the media can be broken into three categories. To entertain, to make us laugh, cry, or engage with a story, to inform, so to teach us something that we did not know, or to persuade, so to convince us of a particular stance or viewpoint. <clears throat> now, uh, I possibly should have had you copy that down, but I haven't, and I'm not breaking my stride now. Um, but these are three of the key things that we will talk about when we're looking at the purposes of the media in S3. By the time you get to S5, if you take media to S5, the purposes become far more complex, okay? But just now we're looking at it in a nice basic way. Is it to entertain, is it to inform, or is it to persuade? Now, there's one other key purpose of the media that, we're, that I haven't put up here, and I deliberately not put it up here, because I want, to, I want that to be our main focus of our next uh, womb, all right? Um, but, what I want you to do just now, oh, I haven't put my wee task symbol, inconsistent, Mr. Corbett. But what I want you to do just now is look over the forms of media that you have written down, okay? Your movies, TV shows, documentaries, newspapers, and adverts. And what I want you to do is decide, do any of them fail to fall into one of these three categories? So we've got movies already, already down to entertain, okay? Put that already. I want you to decide, do any of the others fail to entertain, inform, and persuade? Are there any of them that don't tick at least one of these boxes? Do that just now. Now, the answer is they all fall into at least one of these categories. Most of them fall into more than one, um, depending on what you're watching. Okay. So if we're talking about TV shows, um, if you're talking about generic fictional TV shows from Friends to Rick and Morty to Riverdale to Pretty Little Liars to Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones, you're almost always, always looking at something that is designed to entertain us. Yes, it can do more. Brooklyn Nine-Nine has tackled racism and homophobia. Grey's Anatomy has tackled institutionalised racism, police brutality and sexism. Rick and Morty has criticised pretty, pretty much everything that can be criticised, has been criticised by Rick and Morty. But at its core, each one of these is attempting to entertain us. Each one of these is attempting to produce a show that we will enjoy and engage with. 
Now, the same can be said for standard movies. Again, whether it is Star Wars or Lord of the Rings, whether you're looking at Frozen or Brave, whether you are looking at 127 hours or something else entirely, movies are doing the same thing. They're trying to entertain us. So it is quite interesting that we could look at how Brooklyn Nine-Nine tries to persuade us that institutionalised racism is bad or that Grey's Anatomy tries to inform us uh, about issues like sexism. So they can tick other boxes, but their key purpose is to entertain. Documentaries and newspapers is more interesting. Okay, uh, this is where it all gets a little bit more interesting, and this is actually where I'm building to for this lesson, so that we can then ask ourselves a few questions ahead of the next lesson. Um, on the surface, news programmes and documentaries are only meant to be informing us, especially the news. When you watch the news, the news has a responsibility not to take sides. In the UK, in America, it, 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 it doesn't. But in the UK, uh, our news uh, corporations have a responsibility to be impartial. What that means is they cannot say, oh, no, you know, this politician believes this, but he's a bad person, don't trust him. They can only report on what has been said. They cannot take sides. They cannot be biased. They cannot give their own uh, opinion and, and, and ignore the other side. Okay. The news keeps us up to date with current affairs and what is happening in the world. Documentaries inform us about a specific topic or event. However, what I want you to think about, I've talked a lot here about impartiality, is could it be possible that news and documentaries might be engaged in more than that? Do you think the news, which we will focus on, is completely impartial? Hopefully you have watched the news. If you haven't, I suggest you watch a couple of different uh, news channels over the course of the next five days or you read a couple of different news headlines but what I want you thinking about is is the news impartial and I want you to write that down just now if you can you might not have engaged much with the news um, but if you have over the last couple of months or over your lifetime I want you to jot down do you think the news is completely impartial or do you think different newspapers might take different stances all right. If we look here, we have Trump has been elected. <clears throat> we have quite a lot of uh, interesting headlines. I want you just to take a wee moment and have a look at them. All right. Some of them, what have they done? And though, uh, overwhelmingly negative. Uh, satirical commentary from The Simpsons but do quite a negative kind of approach. What have they done? The Statue of Liberty covering her face, um, complete sh shock and incredulity. And then some of them, Trump boost for our EU. They're describing Trump as a key ally, right? Quite positive for the Trump election. The New World, uh, and this one, an electrifying human drama, and a seismic election creating shockwaves on both sides of the Atlantic Trump quake. Harder to tell. But negative, positive. It's the same story, but it's the approach that is different. Okay? If you look at articles uh, or papers like the Daily Mail and the Daily Express commenting on immigration. Oh, we've gone further again. And then you look at papers like... Uh, the Guardian or the Times or the Telegraph, the Daily Mail and the Daily Express take a very anti-immigrant route. They are anti-immigrant. They tend to be against um, minority religions in the UK, and they tend to speak out against minority uh, race groups in the UK. If you look at Times or the Guardian or the Independent, they tend to be far more uh, pro-immigration, um, pro uh, different kind of cultures and groups coming to the UK uh, and, and, and pro-freedom of choice in, in regards to religion and things like that. They're both reporting on the same stories, but they both take very different stances. And that's going to be really important. 
So the takeaway I want you to have from the second half of this lesson, because that's going to build into what we'll be talking about in our call on Tuesday and what Wednesday's Loom is going to be all about, is that nothing is impartial. When we are studying media, if you come to me, unless you have something just exceptional, if you come to me and go, Mr. Corbett, look at this, it's completely impartial. I will laugh at, well, I won't laugh at you because I'm a professional, but I will politely and kindly explain to you why you're wrong. When we look at anything in the media, news, adverts, magazines, TV shows, radio shows, anything we might look at, even games, it's important to remember that nothing is impartial. Rule number one of media is that everyone wants something from you. No piece of media has been created without an agenda. No piece of media has been created without wanting something from you. It might be your personal information. It might be your engagement. It might be to persuade you of a particular point or idea. It might be your money. It might simply be that they want you to spend money to come and see that piece of media and then maybe any other pieces of media that they will release. But if someone is taking the time to create a piece of media, it is because they want something. If they have taken the time to try and target you with that piece of media, it means they want something from you. As I've said, this can be as simple as they want you to watch their content or as complex as they want to convince you to recycle and vote for the Green Party when you turn 18. But remember, everyone wants something. You have to have that mindset when you're studying media. Everybody wants something. Everybody wants to benefit. That's why they make media. If you think you can come up with a piece of media that wants nothing from you at all, aside from to entertain or inform you, write it down in your drawer just now. Because I'd be interested to read that. All right. And finally, this is our homework task. Okay. Uh, below, I am going to list a few different forms of media. Uh, I want you to choose two and tell me what their obvious purpose, so to entertain, inform, or persuade, is. And then tell me what else they might want from you. So remember, they're not doing it out of the goodness of their heart. When you go to watch a movie, they're not just releasing that movie to entertain you. They're not saying, won't this be jolly nice for, for Elizabeth or John or Hannah? Won't this be nice? Won't they enjoy that? We'll, we'll, we'll spend you know, X amount of money just to entertain them. They want more. So once you've decided whether it's to entertain, inform or persuade, I then want you to go on and think about, okay, but what else do they want? More importantly, what do they hope to gain? So that is why we release media, because we feel we can gain from it. Okay, so the first one I'm wanting to think about is movies in the cinema. You should be able to very easily tell me if that's the entertaining form or persuade, and then I want you to tell me, okay, but why do these big production companies release movies? I want you to think about a politician telling you about his party and their beliefs. Is he trying to entertain you? Is he trying to inform you? Or is he trying to persuade you? And then go on to think, okay, but why is this politician telling me that? Think about an advert. It could be an advert for a new watch, giving you lots of facts and figures about that watch. Is it trying to entertain you, inform you, or persuade you? It might be more than one. But why is it doing it? An app like Clash of Clans on your phone Okay, when we're looking at this one, uh, again, why do these apps exist? Yes, it might be to entertain, inform, or persuade, but it's also doing something else. It also wants something more from us. And I think that this is the final one in our task. I want you to consider this question. Uh, we discussed it briefly on Tuesday and tried to come up with an answer. Why is Facebook free? I want you to consider how rich Zuckerberg is. He's the founder of Facebook and he is wildly rich when you answer. But Facebook is free. WhatsApp, which is also now owned by Facebook, is free. So where does the money come from? And if you can answer that question, it should then help you answer these as well. 
So for your homework, uh, I want you to kind of complete this slide. Remember, you only need to do two of these four. You can do all four if you want, of course. But you only have to do two. But I do want you all to have a bash at answering why is Facebook free? Where does the money come from? That's always a question worth asking. Once you've completed all the tasks, that's both the tasks in the PowerPoint and the tasks in the homework slide, I want you to email it to me. Uh, you can take a picture and send it to me. You can, if you've done it on a Word document, you can send it to me there as well. I might not have time to mark and return everything I get or anything I get, but I will have time to read it because a great deal of our digital lesson on Tuesday is going to be based on the feedback and the answers that I get. And that's important. Okay, So I do need you to get in touch. I do need you to give me that feedback, give me those answers. And that way on Tuesday, I can give you uh, feedback on your answers. I can talk to you all about what kind of things you've been coming up with. Uh, and if you think that you have come up with a uh, form of media that wants nothing from you, I can politely and kindly explain to you why you are dead wrong. Okay? Um, so finally, just to reiterate, I will be seeing you again, hopefully on Tuesday, the 2nd of June. Uh, I will put out the time with this um, loom. It will probably be again around about 11 o'clock to give you time to wake up and prepare for the day and to give me time to wake up and prepare for the day. Uh, and then after that, um, I'll put up, uh, that will then become a weekly meeting uh, until the end of term. And I will put up uh, a loom every week um, as well. And that way you're, you have enough media work to keep you going. Um, I don't know if I said this at the beginning. In fact, I'm pretty sure I didn't. But I really hope you are all well. I hope you're keeping well. I hope you're having uh, a, a lovely time with this uh, weather going back to sunny and lovely as opposed to rainy and awful. I hope uh, you and your families are keeping well. And I really do look forward to seeing you guys on uh, on. Tuesday. I really enjoyed I, I really enjoyed teaching you last Tuesday, by the way. You were really well engaged. I got some really, really good questions. Um and uh, and and you were all kind of helping each other when people couldn't log in and things. It was a brilliant atmosphere and I was really impressed with you. Um you guys were more engaged than my higher class, so, uh, so that's always nice. Um so if we can keep that up, I would be thrilled. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, I hope you're all well and uh, I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Bye.